we have to have mental and spiritual fortitude to accept the revival. A lot of us, as, you know, even in the church, many, many people are snowflakes. Why oh, am I so offended? <laughs> you know how many people have walked away from a church because they were offended by truth? Yes. So what, what, what happens with this? Blessed are you when they revive and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. When you're serving Christ, let me explain. When you are a true servant of God, whatever people say or don't say is irrelevant. Isn't that amazing? It's like, okay, water off my back. <laughs> next. What are your comments? You're a mean human. Okay, next. I love you, brother. Next. I love you, sister. Next. That takes strength. Yes. Could I be doing this job a long time? I know all kinds of people come through this church. Uh, some of you know what I'm talking about, right? I'm still standing here by God's grace. Yeah. And you know, all those who have left, whatever reason, if they came back, I would give them a hug and welcome them again. Yeah. I have nothing against them. Maybe they have something against me, but my message will Stop. not yeah. change. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The message will never change because my God has never changed. Never changed. Amen. 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 The message will remain exactly as it was then. It still is and will always be. Praise his holy name. Amen. So now, I've shown you from Paul, and of course the words of our, our Lord himself, that there is joy in this tribulation. Christ said, blessed. That's a beautiful word. Blessed are you when they revive you. So, you're working at a job, and the subject comes up about, let's suppose at the job, there is a question, you know, do, you are looking for a promotion, and the question is, do you believe in homosexual marriage? <laughs> ah, now you know that's a trick question, right? Yeah. Because if you say, no, uh, no guess what? You don't get a promotion. Mm -hmm. So what do you say? Um, yes, sometimes. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, big buddy. What have you just done? You have, you have denied your Savior. Uh, sir, you want me to give you the truth, right? No, I don't accept homosexual marriage, but what does that have to do with my job? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying to marry you, boss. Am I trying to marry you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, but they're doing this deliberately because they want to get rid of us yeah. Christians. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. Do you know in America what they're trying to do? Get rid of us yeah. because we are the problem? Yeah. Think. Think, think, think. <laughs> All right, let's go to... Uh, so what's the evidence? That Christ was speaking not not to the end time, but to all Christians until the end time. Well, Acts chapter 5, here we go. Paul the Apostle himself. Now, I don't have to go through all of Acts because I've done that already. I did an entire series of studies in the book of Acts. Yeah. Explained it verse by verse, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, yeah. and in some cases, word by word. <laughs> okay? In Acts chapter 5, so what happens? Peter and John, they get problems. So they begin proclaiming the name of Yeshua. Do you think the Jews liked it? No, of course not. So problems, here. And they agreed with him, and when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, when they had called for the apostles and put them on a pedestal and washed their feet and gave them $1,000. No, when they had called for the apostles and beaten them. Oh, you want to be an apostle? All of you um, apostles out there who call yourselves apostles, when was the last time you were beaten for Christ's work? <laughs> An apostleship doesn't come by having five million dollars, five cars, and two airplanes. Okay, they called for the apostles and beat them. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. What was the problem? The name of Jesus. What was the problem? The name of Jesus. So they departed from the presence of the council. Now watch. My sermon title is what? Joy amidst tribulation. tribulation. Watch this. Unlikely. Strange behavior. Logically inconsistent. Almost um, uh, uh, incongruent. Watch. So Peter and John, these were the ones who were beaten. Peter and John departed from the presence of the council. Jewish council. Rejoicing 
I rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. I could just imagine the scenario, I wasn't there, but just rejoicing, maybe in spirit, of course, but even maybe in physical manifestation and behavior, maybe, maybe to use a modern thing, maybe Peter and John high five each other saying, yeah man, all for Jesus, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. Uh, I think my, my microphone fell off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, my microphone, I was high fiving too much today. But uh, I, I, you, you got the drift? Rejoicing! I can see Peter and John having a belly laugh, going back to report to the church, and they all say, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord, Brother Peter! Praise the Lord, Brother John! You are count, you're, you're worthy! You're, you're counted worthy to suffer shame for His name. Amen. Amen. Too many Christians today don't want any suffering. Mm -hmm. You want an easy life because, see, we have been fed a lie. The church in America has been fed a lie consistently, and when a lie keeps on being fed, eventually we believe the lie. Yes. Yes. Too many Christians believe the mega pastors, who for the most part are false. They live in their lap of luxury. I don't. And none of you here, I guarantee you, live in luxury because I have a feeling if you were living in luxury, you would never come here. <laughs> Amen? Sorry. Love all of you. Amen. Amen. So, so, so the Peter or John, these, these, are, these are Christ's servants. They got beaten up. They got a warning. Don't preach in the name of Jesus anymore or we beat you again. We put you in jail. This time we cut your heads off. And they're leaving the council and they're rejoicing. Wow! Peter, isn't that wonderful, John? Brother, we are so, we are so happy. We are so blessed that they beat us for the name of Yeshua. Did we get it? Yep. I think of the you know, pastors and I think of the, the pastors I've met over the years. The many pastors and members I've met over the years in Africa and India and Vietnam and Pakistan who have been beaten and imprisoned. And yet when they were released, you know what they did? <laughs> they went right back to doing ministry. Not one of them quit. Not one of them quit. And it it's not for money because they don't have money. I have seen them with my eyes and spoken with them. So I'm not telling you something I read in a book. I'm telling you what is. Amen? Amen. Let's go to um, Acts chapter 9. So this was of Peter, Peter and John, right? Let's look at Paul. Acts chapter 9. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Joy amidst tribulations. So Acts chapter 9. Saul, remember Saul, Saulos? Saulos, before he became Paulos. Saul, before he became Paul, okay. Saul, remember that he hated Christians. And what was his job? To go and search them out and bring them before the council so they could be stoned to death. Imagine Saul enjoyed that job. I don't want to get political, but that's politics. <coughs> that was politics, all right? Listen to what he read between the lines. So eventually God says, you know, it's time to bring about a miracle in this man. I like this man's spirit. I like his energy. I like his passion. I want to use that for my kingdom. So God does, Jesus does an amazing thing. He gets him blind. He hits him. He makes him. He causes him to fall off his high horse, literally. <laughs> Blinds him. And then in his blind condition, he is totally useless. He can't locate anybody. He can't search anybody. He is basically done. Unless God intervenes. Yes. Amen. Amen. No, it wasn't like now. When you were blind back then, you were nothing. Now you're blind, you can still command a big salary. When you were blind then, you were a piece of garbage. Uh -huh. So Jesus says, um, okay. He calls his other servant, Ananias, and things, right? And says, um, I have a job for you. You will go to him, Paul. He's blind. And go tell him what's going to happen to him. So. The Lord said to him, go, for he's a, this is God speaking to Ananias here, because Ananias was afraid to go to, because he had heard, this man is a dangerous man, Saul is a killer, right? He says, go, for 
for he is a chosen yes. vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, before kings, and before the children of Israel. Now, here's the verse, here's the part that is not popular. Everybody would like the, the first part. Bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer my name. for my name's sake. Amen. What? Lord, you want me to go tell Paul? <laughs> I'm going to anoint your eyes and heal you, brother, and you know, you're going to be great. And now the Lord says to give you a message that you, the hunter, will become the hunted. Mm -hmm. yes. That you, Paul, will suffer greatly for my name's sake. You see why this message will not be popular? It can't. Who wants to hear a message like this? You know, would you like to tell your son or your daughter growing up, son, daughter, um, I want you to know something. When you, when you begin going to school, you're going to have a very hard time. <laughs> Why? Well, because the school is of the devil. <laughs> huh? Yes, 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 son, the school is of Satan. You are of Christ. You'll be different, and they will look down on you, mm -hmm. and they will call you nasty names. But when they call you nasty names, you smile and say, Jesus is my Lord. Yes. What? Yeah, yes, sir, Jesus is my Lord. And when you say that, they will slap you. And you say, Jesus is my Lord again. <laughs> okay, I'm being funny, but I'm making my point, right? Yeah. Paul, you will suffer many things for my name's sake. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Too many Christians, that's what we are doing. We are compromising. <laughs> here's, here's the logic. Well, you know, it wouldn't hurt. It's just one time I'm going to, you know, this one time I'm going to go to this party and get drunk. Just one time to please my brother. You mean you'll please your brother and displease your Lord? Did your brother or sister die in time to cross for your sins? And you stand up and say, and when all the party, I remember an incident years ago, years ago of maybe my brothers, I hope they forgive me for that, I don't know, but they wanted me to come you know, every, every, every year they had, they used to, I don't know if they still do, they still have what's called the Old Year's Night Party. That's where a big party with hundreds, maybe hundreds of people, the one of the brothers home, and they would serve the liquor like crazy. And you know, people, it wasn't a Christian party, it was a worldly party. So one year they begged me to come, I said, you know, you should come and experience it. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll come. So I went to experience that. And when the people started coming and they were all drinking and getting on and dancing in provocative ways and some people who knew me wanted to grab me and dance in that um, sexually provocative way, all of a sudden it hits me, Lord, what am I doing here? I, uh, I, um, I excused myself and I stepped out on the streets next to the house and I observed. And I told my brothers, I will never come back to one of these. Yep. <laughs> now, maybe they thought he's too holy. I don't care. As a man of God, that's not where I should be. Yes. I was being nice to show up, not knowing the devil was going to show up there too. <laughs> he was the first one that was invited. <laughs> that's right. So, you, I'm making a point out of the boast, but to show you, sometimes you have to make a decision that may be unpopular. Yes. And you may run or incur the dislike or displeasure of your own family. And that may include your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, your brother, your brother, your sister. What, what, what will you do? I will, I will incur their wrath because I don't want to incur God's wrath. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Yes. So did Paul suffer? <laughs> you go through the rest of the book of Acts, and I'm not going to do that. Wow. Paul suffered more than any missionary, perhaps. I mean, the whole book of Acts after, uh, after he comes into, into focus is about Saul suffer, Paul suffering. He goes here, they kick him out. He goes another place, they stole him. He goes another place, they beat him. He goes another place, he goes back to prison. Shipwreck. You know, I mean, is that the life? Your average Christian wants to live? No. But that's the price of following Christ. Yes. 
of really following Christ. I know we have some young people here today. I want you to know in advance, the schools you go to are not going to like you. They might like you for your basketball, <laughs> and they might like you for your other skills, academic skills or sports skills, but the moment a discussion arises and you have to stand up for Christ, at that point, you're disliked. Because you're standing up for truth, for Christ. Amen. But don't be afraid to stand up for Christ because one day you will receive the reward in the kingdom of God and they'll be going to hell unless they repent. Amen. 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 Are we on the same page, everybody? Yes. Yes. So now let's go to Acts, uh, one more ch verse in Acts. Acts chapter 20. And then I have two more scriptures or so. Yeah. All right. Acts chapter 20. Paul the Apostle, more trouble for him. <laughs> but I want you to notice his approach to, to, to suffering, tribulation. Paul's approach to tribulation was absolutely amazing. And I'm not saying that anybody here, including myself, has that level. But you know what? That's the level we should want to attain. Amen? Amen. So watch. The, the people and um, his, his friends, his church family were trying to, uh, in Ephesus, they were trying to discourage him from going to Jerusalem. Because they had a feeling that in Jerusalem, things were going to get worse for him. So look at Paul. Look at Paul's speech. And see, now I go bound in the spirit. So in the spirit, you already knew what would happen. I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that, I will, ha that will happen to me there. Paul is saying, I'm going. I know you guys don't want me to go to Jerusalem because you fear for my life. But I must go. The Holy Spirit testifies in every city saying that chains and tribulations await me. Now which man in his right mind, think with me church, which man in his right mind says chains and tribulation? That's exactly what the doctor ordered, I'm going. <laughs> Get it? But God had commanded him to go to Jerusalem. And so he was going to obey the command even though the Spirit already was telling him chains and tribulations await him. Now, look at verse 24, which I find absolutely amazing. But none of these things move me. None of these things. So, okay, I have to go to Jerusalem and they're going to imprison me. I'm going to be in chains. Maybe they'll beat me again. Whatever. They don't move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself. So that I may, let's continue. So that I may, so that I may finish my race. And we finish my race with joy. joy. Finish my race with joy. joy. Finish my race with sorrow. Joy. With sadness. Joy. With despair. Joy. With depression. Joy. With doubt. Joy. With suicide. Joy. joy. And we finish my race with joy. <laughs> this man goes bound to Jerusalem. I mean, no, no, he doesn't go bound. He goes to Jerusalem, but he knows he will be bound. He says, guys, elders, church members. I thank you very much for praying for me, for weeping with me, and for even advising me not to go. You're right. When I go there, I will be bound. But it's okay. I want to finish my race with joy. <laughs> and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus. Who gave that ministry to him directly? The Lord Yeshua. To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. I will go to Jerusalem and I will tell them what my Lord says. Yes. And if in telling them that I am chained and in prison, or even if I lose my life, it's okay. Okay. Yes. It's okay. Yes. I'm not saying, brethren, dearly beloved, that anybody here is going to lose your life. That's not what I'm saying. The message is joy amidst tribulations. Yes. Maybe none of us in this room will have to lose our lives for Christ. Maybe. I don't know. I have come close to being jailed. I think you all know that. I have come close to that. But by God's grace, it didn't happen. And I'm still standing here. Although why not be running in some cell in Vietnam? <laughs> okay. And I think of Asia Bibi. What, what she is, I can't see that. Okay, yeah, see that. I, I think what she is going through and her family is going through. I think of all these pastors that will be jailed. Bronson, Bronson yeah. All these men and women of God. And, oh, by the way, something happened um, with some young man. Yeah. Now, whether or, not, yeah. whether or not he was right to go there, I don't know. I'm not making a judgment. But he went to uh, one of the islands, the Andaman Islands, which belong to India. 
it was, it's illegal to go there. The government, Indian government says you can't go there, no tourists are allowed there. Not even the Indians are allowed there. And the fishermen, the fishermen knew that. But they still took him to this island, which is 700 miles away from um, India's subcontinent, in the Bay of Bengal area. And he went there, no sooner he arrived, he was killed by bows and arrows. Funny thing though, he knew he was gonna die. He already had said, if I die there, don't blame anybody. Wow. I remember going to one of those islands, not the Andaman, a different island, but in um, India, where the people knew nothing about the gospel. And Pastor Prem and I went over there and gave them the gospel. It was quite an experience. No arrows were shot at me, thank God. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't think Pastor Prem would have taken me there, right? But I'll just show you. Now, that same island I went to, it's illegal for any visitor to go. I cannot go back. Just show you how. See, when you're doing God's work, you don't think of danger. Uh -huh. You are the command to do God's work. Uh -huh. Husbands, wives, parents, young people. If God has called you, if Christ has called you, be faithful to the calling. Uh -huh. Well, oh, well, my, my son is upset. What does that have to do with your calling? My daughter, my spouse, it matters zero. If anybody's upset, once you're doing what God says. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Yeah, beloved, your family didn't die on Calvary's cross. No. Amen. And as Christ said eloquently, so sometimes the worst enemies you will have will be your family. Yes. That's a very tragic thing. You would think the greatest support you should have is from your family, and sometimes the least support is from your family. Amen. Now what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> What are you going to do? Do what God says. So Paul was not afraid to go to Jerusalem knowing that he ran the risk of dying. Yeah. But he still went. Peter experienced the same thing. Uh, let's go to one scripture in Peter and then I want to wrap up because my time is, is wrapping up. First Peter chapter... Let me see which one I'll take because there are two scriptures I want to take here. I think I'll go to First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. Let's go to chapter 4, right? All right, here we go. Chapter 4, verse 12 to verse 19. I'll go through this very quickly. Here is Peter now. So we talked about Peter and John. We talked about Paul. Now we talk about Peter's, Peter's writings. Beloved. Who is that? That's you and me, right? Yeah. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial. Ooh, fiery. Anybody likes that word? Nope. Should I drop Meshach and Abednego, huh? Fiery trial. And many others over the years. Fiery trial. Those who were burnt at the stake for the name of Christ. Concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. Why is it that Christians get, oh, can you believe I defied me because I believe in Jesus? Yes, of course I can believe that. You're supposed to get fired. Okay, if you get better. It's okay. It's okay if they fire you because you believe in Jesus. Now, it's not okay, but it's okay. You get my point? It's not okay legally, but it's okay spiritually. They fire you. So, don't be surprised if some strange thing happened to me. Oh, you know, they found out, they looked at my Facebook page, and they found out that I'm a believer in Christ. And I believe that Jesus is the only way to salvation. So guess what? They sent me a letter of termination. Praise the Lord! Somebody said, praise, praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Rather than, oh, woe is me. <laughs> My life is over. <laughs> but what is that? Where is the joy of Mr. Tribulation? But rejoice! <laughs> what did Peter say? So Jesus said, rejoice. Paul says, rejoice. What does Peter say? Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. Yes. America has reached a point, all of us living here in the USA, and for those in other nations, I don't know specifically about your nation, but here in America, because of the wickedness that now exists mm -hmm. and is saturating the halls of power in this nation, because people no longer want Christ, mm -hmm. they don't want the Bible, people don't want law anymore, mm -hmm. people don't want authentic Christians around, 
They weren't lying Christians. Yes. Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. So the more the suffering, the more the rejoicing. Did you get it? Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. Your neighbors don't like you? Rejoice. You go to a Thanksgiving dinner and nobody wants to mention the name God? Rejoice. You go to a Christmas party and you mention the name. So why are you guys celebrating Christmas? Oh, it's a good time to eat and drink and get married. And you say, well, okay, I mean, that's, that's your thing, but uh, the reason I'm here is because I believe in the birth of Christ. Amen. And he came to save us from our sins. <laughs> uh, take that outside, please. Are you with me now? Yes. Don't, don't zip your lip. Open your mouth. Speak the truth in love. Don't speak it to con condemn them. You're telling them what the Bible says, right? So be rejoiced to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, Christ's glory is not yet revealed to us. He's up there in the right hand of God the Father. When His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Yeah. Can you imagine, brethren, the day when we stand before Christ and we receive that reward or those rewards based on the fact that we were willing to go through the persecution. Yes. That we were willing to suffer all the tribulations mm -hmm. and never complain to God and say, Lord, thank you. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well There'll be no greater words at that moment. I believe, if I may say so, you will have spiritual tears, maybe real tears of joy streaming down your face. Mm -hmm. When Jesus looks you in the eye and says, Well done, my beloved servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. 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 And all of the sufferings, and all of the imprisonments, and the beatings, and the revilings, etc., etc., that may come rushing back to your mind in that instant will be gone forever. Amen. 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 So rejoice, because you and I will experience exceeding joy. Let me wrap this up by telling you very quickly what are some of the Sources of our tribulation as Christians. I'm giving you five. Remember, I'm not talking about the great tribulation, right? I'm not talking about those just joining. I'm not talking about the tribulation, the prophetic end time event. I'm not talking about troubles you go through based on your own folly. No. I'm talking about the tribulations, the trials, the, the, the sufferings that we go through, the discomfort, the distress that we suffer because we are Christians. So here are five sources. They're all connected, but one, <laughs> Satan's direct attacks. Satan can often directly attack us with God's permission. Remember he attacked Job? Yes. So Satan may on occasion attack us directly by God's permission. When there is a direct attack by the devil, you have to be alert. The Bible says you have to be what? Be vigilant. Be sober. Why? Because your enemy the devil walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Okay, so the first and foremost, Satan's direct attacks. Number two, the secular world. Oh yes, fellow Americans and world citizens, the secular world hates Christ. The secular world hates Christ. And therefore, what did Jesus say? He said, if they hate me, they will hate you also. That's in the book of John. So, if the secular world hates you, you're working in a job and the name comes up and they look at you funny, hey, you say, praise the Lord. You will have suffering from the secular world. Number three, source of tribulation, fake friends. <laughs> I use the word fake deliberately because every person who smiles at you is not your friend. Why do some of us not understand that? Everybody who smiles with you and says, Hey brother, good to see you. Give me a nice big squeeze. Doesn't mean a thing. Fake friends. Fake friends will sell you out because Christ said it. Christ said it. The love of many shall what? Wax cold. So that pretentiousness, hip hypocrisy. So fake friends are dangerous. And why they're dangerous? Because you think they're your friends. Mm -hmm. What about you? Are you a fake friend? See, you have to ask that question too. You don't want to, how many of you are longing for fake friends? Raise your hands. <laughs> now, are you a fake friend? Mm -hmm. 
No. No. See? So we have to be sure that when we say I'm a friend, I mean you can call. Yeah. I literally mean that. And if you don't call me, then I'll call you. And if you don't want me to call you, tell me, tell me that. Fake friends. Okay, number four. I know you wouldn't like the next one. Church family. Do you know that? Do you know that you can get tribulations from church family? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the church family, members of the body of Christ. Yeah. And I'm not saying they're necessarily necessarily fake, but they're certainly very immature, right? And they gossip, you know, mm -hmm. gossip. Yeah. Well, look at that. Look at this. You got to be careful. But will you allow that to turn you away from Christ? No. Will you allow that? Anybody knows where the perfect church exists? No. No. Have you found it yet? No. Oh. When you find it, please invite me. I'll come. <laughs> but then I can't because I'll make it imperfect. <laughs> you get my point? You need to be in the body of Christ, but don't allow little arguments sidetrack you. Yeah. Don't, don't. Because then you're going to suffer some tribulations. It's okay. If, if church family, if church family, let's suppose they don't like you. Maybe they invite you. <laughs> so your church family invites you to some get together. But you, you, you talk about Christ during that time, and they want some secular music and secular dancing, and then they come back and say, Paul, don't invite that one. He is a pain in his sweater. All day long he talks about Jesus. Is that, a, is that a problem? No, it's not. And then, number five, your personal family. Now, I, I have to be careful what I say here, because I love my personal family, okay, my wife and son, but I mean also my extended family, my mother, my brothers, right? That's personal family. So whoever is in your personal family, don't assume or expect that everybody in your personal family is on your side. Right? Mm -hmm. If you still don't get that, then I don't know when you will. Your own daughter, your own son, your own parents, your own sibling, your own spouse can turn against you. Because of your loyalty to Christ. Does that, should I change your loyalty? No. So you see, dearly beloved, we are living in very difficult times and Christ says these things will happen increasingly. Will you be ready when it happens? Or will you be taken by surprise? Oops! I didn't see that coming. Let me tell you something. Let me give you one word of warning. Prepare now to see it coming. Amen. So when it comes, you don't say, boy, that really caught me off guard. Mm -hmm. Christ prophesied it. Yes. Dearly beloved, if you have been listening to the sermon, I pray that God will wake you up to truth and realize that if you're an authentic believer, not a fake one, if you're an authentic Christian, you will experience greater tribulations until that blessed day. When Messiah comes back and we are raptured, and then forever from that point on, we will no longer have to worry about any more sufferings, persecutions, tribulations, distresses, afflictions, sickness, no nothing. We shall be glorified with Him, and we shall reign forever and ever. And one last thing, when we reign with Christ, no more political parties, yeah. no more Republicans, yeah. no more Democrats, no more liberals, no more conservatives, no more liberal theologians, no more faith preachers, because Jesus, Yeshua, will be the commander of everything. Hallelujah. And we who have betrayed, we who have suffered with the sufferings of Christ, will have proven our worth. And we shall reign under him. Forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen, Amen. and amen.